are we really in a lockdown or are we really free beings of light and love? So here to play with us today is reality chance surfer, Jema Bircham. Hi, Jema. Hi, Dee. Lovely Dee. How are you? I'm really good. I work today. So I just, I just got home a little while ago. So I'm ready to go. Rip roaring. All right. Well, let's get right into it because this is June 1st, 2020, and we're in the middle of a so-called lockdown. And um, this is such an interesting topic for reality transurfing because one of the first things that I want to get into is this thing about the space of variations because in the space of variations, anything that could possibly happen is happening now and anything that ever could has or will is all happening now in this eternal um now so if that's the case um how how much of how we are perceiving the situation is like are we choosing like out of the space of variations are we choosing that we want to now be in this you know so-called lockdown you know and 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 the other thing about it as well is that are we are we really locked down or are we really free beings of light and love? <laughs> well, my personal take is I think we're free beings of light and love in, in so many different ways. And as far as the space of variation goes, my take on, is it on, you know, there's all of these unlimited parallel universes that you can hook up to, but at the same time, we agree to souls to be here at this time. So actually everybody that's here, especially light workers, healers, spreaders of the truth, that sort of thing, we, we have, I think, way more importance than what we give ourselves credit for. I think we chose to be here at this time. I think our job is very important to spread that love and that light and that faith and that understanding that our world always does take care of us. Mm -hmm. You know, and then we look around and we see some of the madness going on. You know, like right now we have the riots and all of that. And, um, there's so many different theories on that right now. You know, you have the people that's, you know, really mourning and they're, they're, they're taking it really hard and they're sad and they're in misery and they're in suffering. Then you have a group of people that's like, okay, that happened. I, you know, that feel, I, I'm going to go out, I'm going to speak my mind. We need to protest. We need to do this, but we need it in a peaceful way. Then you have the people that say, well, we need to question what happened. What's, the narrative here then you have the other side that's like totally this is this is fake he didn't die he's not dead there's you know, so you have all of these different theories going out there and I really think that that is different timelines that we are going to find ourselves on because so much is going on right now energetically your choice every single choice that you make as an individual and I say you meaning me too is a vital importance right now vital importance so I've really had to train myself to not get upset over things and I do really research like I really try to feel inside too if something doesn't feel quite right and if it doesn't feel quite right I kind of look into it a little bit because our body our energetic system tells us everything that we need to know so as far as that space of variation I'm choosing good thoughts you got to mm -hmm. keep your quality of thoughts. But even like the other day when we were talking, you know, through our little message and I'm like, man, I'm not feeling it today. You oh, know, yes. it's just, <laughs> I was yeah. Because we have all of this energy coming at us all the time. And then you really have to stay on top of your game. And I was feeling kind of low that day. You know, yeah. I'm not perfect. Far from it. Yeah. But talking to you and everything is, you know, I've got to make my thought quality a little bit better so you might pop in some good music or you know lift listen to something uplifting or something like that and that got me out of that mm -hmm. that mojo I was in you know but mm -hmm. I, I think it's just more important than ever mm -hmm. choice leads to your space of variations that you want your mm -hmm. because yeah. it's unlimited right now yeah yeah it, it's amazing like it really is true that there's so many different versions, you know, and, and, you know, not only of the, uh, um, lockdown, I mean, I mean, there's, there's the whole one that they're, they're trying to divide and conquer, right? So, 
um, you know, that it's like racism is being, you know, making people think that there, there's more racism than there is and, and that kind of right. thing you know but um so there's all these different things that that we hear and uh and you know same with same with like the virus like there is a virus there is a virus they make it's the, it's like it's all part of the big uh, you know the, the one percent that's taking us down and all that and then it's like we have to be really careful because we're empowering them right so so like whatever however we're looking whatever we're looking at we empower so so we really um it's it's so important to be conscious of where we're putting our attention and our and our emphasis and to look at things i i, I think it's kind of interesting Tino Macero says that you can think of it as like looking through a window like so there's all these different realities so you go like you look at this reality and there's the David Icke version and you look at this reality, right and then you go but then now I'm gonna be um, those are ones I'm looking at and now I'm gonna choose the one that I'm gonna like resonate with and align with kind of so and also to to um, lighten up and think of it as um, as um, entertainment in some sense because it's like it's interesting to look at that stuff like you know when you you know you can listen to somebody talking and they give this big long talk they give their big version it's really really interesting and it's almost like going to a movie watching a movie and then it doesn't mean that um you know now you're gonna you know live in the way that people in this movie are living but you can watch it but because reality seems to be so malleable right <laughs> that's right yeah and it's you have the you have the narratives like you said you have so many different narratives and do you ever listen to magenta pixie who's that no i don't know that i really enjoy listening to her she okay. she, she uh uh speaks of the i think it's the the group of nine it's like a channel channeling oh, okay. but it's not really a channeling it's okay. like it's I just really like her a lot and she talks a lot about how a lot of us light workers right now are being pulled into this because we do have such an important role right now that we do need to stay informed we do need to be knowledgeable we do need to research but it's so important to stay on that positive side of it knowing that it's going to it's going to come to light and that's and if you think about it it's really an exciting time that we're living in. It really is. I mean, it's easy to go down, oh my gosh, there's so many terrible things going on. But on the drive here after work, I was thinking, you know what? It's really how you look at it in your perspective because we're making history right now. Mm -hmm. We are in a huge historical landmark I'm, time right now. I mean, you're talking like, when Atlantis went down or when, you know, that's how much power that we have right now. Mm -hmm. So it's more important than ever to focus on those quality of thoughts, do your research, find out the truth, because it, a lot of people don't want to look at the darkness. They don't want to look at what's some of the th horrific things going on right now with yeah. the deep state and with celebrities and, you know, yeah. people that we have on that we've put over the years, put on pedestals, yeah. you know, and it's like, you have that cognitive dissonance of that can't be happening. That's too bizarre, you know? And some of the things, if you really start researching is bizarre. I mean, who on earth would do that? Who on earth would yeah. think that? But I don't know. I yeah. can't say it's wrong. I can't say it's right. I'm, I'm not there, you know? So a lot of times somebody will ask me something. I'm like, I really don't know. You know, I wasn't there. I'm not saying that in a smart way, but yeah. unless these eyes witness it, I question everything nowadays. Yeah. I mean, with Photoshop and yeah. the agendas going on, I mean, it's just, I really, I try to keep myself in that line of free thinking, research, and stay on the positive side of the re research as far as not positive news, but positive yeah. side, meaning that looking at it, knowing about it, learning about it but keeping yeah. my thought quality and my frequency up, Yeah, you know, and I yeah. do a lot of studying. Yes. I, 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 um, but you're posting some really interesting things on your, on your Facebook page there. Um, and the, um, the thing too, is that, is that when I, when I do look at all of that stuff, you know, with the deep state and everything like deep inside me, I could just 
feel how they're falling, right? Like, it's like they are grasping at straws, right? Like, it's not going to work. Like, they can't pull it off. You know, there's, there's like two main reasons. Like, one is that um, um, we have access to so much information now. Like, and I don't know whether they created the internet as a, you know, like, I don't know, you know, what the background is for the internet or anything, but I think that because we have the internet and so many people can get together and so many people can access information, um, and that, um, more and more people are, um, you know, the consciousness is raising so much, right? And there's there's more and more people who, you know, light workers for lack lack of another word or whatever, just just people who are aligning with the light and going like, so um, they can't be defeat like they're they're they can't keep going like this, like they've been ruling the world for so long. And if if this is really true, and if this is really what's happening, and if that is pro is probably a, a val you know a viable timeline in the space of variations. But in that timeline, they're going down. You know? I think so. Yeah, I, def I definitely do. I, I mean, to me, light always wins anyway. But I mean, they are, are it's, it's the fall of the cabal for, for real. I mean, and it's happening and they're, and they're grasping at straws. You know, I, I, you probably saw I posted a meme that, meme that said the COVID-19 scam is coming over. The, the murder hornets was a fail. So now we've got, you know, social divide. And it's true. And I don't, and I'm not insensitive. I mean, I don't have a racist bone in my body. I mean, I really don't. I really, truly love everyone. Yes. And I can honestly say that from the bottom of my heart. Yes. And it just, it's frustrating because uh, I think minorities have been used for so many years for votes and to keep certain people in office. And it's like, you know, you don't want to, I don't know. It's a touchy subject. I mean, it's just really a touchy subject. So all I can do is just, you know, I'll see something and I'll just set, shoot at love and, and say, mm -hmm. you know what, I, you know, you're welcome to that perspective, but I'm sending you love, be, you know, for awakening, that sort of thing, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I saw a post today that was sad, you know, and it was, it was reverse racism. And I thought, you know, with that attitude, we're not going to get anywhere. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's everybody needs to band together right now more than anyone because mm -hmm. it really is these people in the deep, deep state and in the cabal all they don't care all they want to do is control that's yeah. all they want to do is control and they're going to do anything that they can to do that mm -hmm. so uh we gotta love we just have to yeah you know yeah. put that little ball of golden light around us and shoot <laughs> out <laughs> and, and everybody else you know and, uh, you know, and then even like, you know, there's so many different ways to look at it because then there's this, this whole other thing that, you know, even them, they're playing a role, right? Because, you know, if, if everybody is, everybody's an infinite soul, different people are playing different roles, like Hitler played a role, you know? And so, so like, um, um, people, you know, whatever they are doing, and then it's like, like, we don't really know what's going to happen, like when we die and what's going on. And we have our, like, we, we definitely can intuit and contact our our eternal nature and everything but as far as real love you know I, I i do like that saying that you know we are all one does not mean except for those assholes over there right so it's like exactly you know and so even to go like okay you guys are playing a role that you know so we're we're playing this game we're playing this video game right where you guys are trying to conquer us and we're gonna win <laughs> yeah yes yeah yes. Gonna have a beer you know, I don't know. <laughs> we're winning this round yeah yeah um, because it's like how much of this reality is, is you know, because the whole thing about dreams, like when we're sleeping and we're dreaming and the dreams are so real, right? Oh my gosh. You wake up and it's a dream. Well, like this is like, I, I really kind of sense that this too is a dream because this can't, this isn't the end all and be all, you know, like, like it's another, and it, and it doesn't mean that it's just a dream. It doesn't mean that it's not valuable and wonderful and amazing, but the fact that it's like, um, a play you know especially like when we're in touch with our infinite nature we we know that this body we're going to shed like a coat you know it's like it's not like who we are and actually i was thinking about when you were talking about how you were feeling kind of yucky because i was feeling really yucky recently too and then i have my my go-to's you know where i listen to certain like muji has a certain talk where it's so funny and he just cracks me up because he makes it really funny you know the way yeah. the way he says Oh, like now you're all like he goes like any kind of like psychological pain you have is because you're identifying with your personhood you know and he goes like oh the person they hurt my feelings you know nobody understands me even my mom you know <laughs> and he, and the, 
way he does it, you know, and then he goes like, then he tells you how to um, um, let the feeling be like, go like, where is it in my body? Like, oh, I feel like I'm being stabbed in the gutter. Oh, I feel like, and he goes like, so then like, let it be there. Like, don't resist it, right? And then when you let it be there, it moves through you. Yeah? And then he goes, but don't get too excited. Don't open the champagne yet, he says, because you got to invite it back. You got to go, come on back here and throw another punch. You know, but you're talking to your own, you know, ego or your own self saboteur. Yeah. Like you tell it, come back and give me another punch. And then it says, it sends you a text that says, not when you're looking. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. That's stuff like that, and it helps me. Uh, it helps me get centered because it's like, it's that um, when we identify as being this person, it's the person that is suffering, right? That's right. That's right. It's a great technique too. And I, and I tell this to my, my uh, coaching clients too. It's like, uh, I deal with a lot of people that has anxiety and panic attacks. And I'm like, you need to look at that and just say, give me more. I give me more of that. I want more. I want more. I want more. And it's, it's like the panic goes, huh? What? <laughs> and then it stops, you know, and it's like, give me more, give me more. Or if somebody's like upset, like you said, Oh, just act it out. Like, oh, like, I'm so upset. Oh my gosh. I'm just, and get on the floor and, you know, just like act it out and make a big deal out of it. You'll start laughing with just in a few minutes. Cause you'll be like, this is so ridiculous. You know, it's like, it's when you shove it down and you ignore it and you're like, that's not there. La, 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 la. That's when it's going to come back and bite you every time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to keep coming back and keep coming back and keep coming back. So yeah, yeah. you're spot on on that. Yeah. For sure. It's actually the resistance that's causing the pain because it's going like when you're, cause like, you know, we resist it. We go like, Oh no, I'm not feeling like that. Like, you know, and, and then trying to like, you know, smooth it over or whatever. And then you end up just pushing it down. So it's like the resistance, you know, and I've even heard that about physical pain. It's like when you have physical pain, that if you resist the physical pain, that intensifies the pain. But if you allow space around it and the more space you can around, so if you have a, a pain somewhere, you you can imagine the whole galaxy space around it and the, and it, then the pain in comparison gets smaller, right? But the resistance is such a big one, right? For Ab Absolutely. Yeah. And one of the best things that you can do with physically, physical pain is say you have a pain in your foot, feel it, feel it and appreciate it and ask it, why are you there? What are you trying to tell me? And then a lot of times you'll get an answer. Because, I mean, it's, it's proven that there's all the spots in our body are related to emotional issues. You know, um, like if you have a pain in your, in your side, you know, there's actually a wonderful book that I have that's called Messages from the Body. It's oh. wonderful. It has everything in it, everything in it. And like if you have a pain, you'll look it up and there's all of these different reasons that's associated with that particular area of your body and things that could be going on with that and then also too like affirmations kind of like louise hayes heal your body a long long time ago but that's just like a little pamphlet this right. is like this thick and it's it's a wonderful it's it's more of a textbook like for um anybody that especially if you're working with people to kind of help them and more times than not it's spot on it is spot on and there's some things that if I'm helping and they have a pain and I'll read, I'll be like, Ooh, this is kind of deep. And sometimes it doesn't, you know, mean anything to me. But then when I read it to my, to my client, they're like, Oh my gosh, that's absolutely right. So then we kind of know where to work from there. And then they'll go into the pain and they'll feel the pain. And, you know, before you know it, if it's something emotional level that we can do an affirmation for and change that belief on, the pain goes away. Yeah. That's so it's a great learning tool. It's a right. great learning tool. Right. What yep. about when you, when you cause it yourself, like uh, about a month ago, I wheeled a, I was wheeling a shopping cart down a curb and I wheeled the cart right onto my toe and I, and I, um, and it was my baby toe. And I mean, I was laughing in one way. I was laughing hysterically because I was going like the smallest part of my body I could possibly hurt. Right? <laughs> But then I couldn't wear, um, you know, I couldn't wear my shoes or whatever. You know, I had to wear these big boots and it took a month to heal, you know, and I don't think it broke, but it, it, it hurt to walk. But so like when you cause it yourself too, is that, that's probably. Same deal. Yeah. And most of the time, yeah, that's the, absolutely. I wish I would have known that. I would have looked it up and read it to you. Oh, you know, you. who knows? It still might be there. How's your toe now? We might have to look that up, up after we're done. Like it was completely healed, you know, and it's funny too. Good. 
I was because like like you know like late and like later I realized that I was always saying this is going to take a month to heal like I don't know why like I was saying that and sure enough a month later it healed and I don't know if it's because I was assuming that but right. uh, you know what is this guy like a wheel. and if you do it on purpose you pull it on but I was probably trying to give myself a message of some sort but absolutely yeah they're all messages I mean if I'm cooking and I cut my finger somewhere I'm like oh I wonder what that means yeah. <laughs> what right. are you trying to tell me yeah, yeah. yeah. But I'm maybe... telling you you were sloppy with your knife that's what I'm telling you yeah exactly right <laughs> I you know I don't know I just research everything so yeah. it's just because we're we're all in information everything's information everything is information right yeah that's it and that goes in line with um you know with everything is energy frequency vibration and you can add information to that because um because it's the information that is within that energy you know it's it's yeah absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. you know music you know you've got that frequency level of music and there's information there that that yeah. vibration is sending your energy field information and uh you know my kids are like oh my, my gosh mom's on her tangent again you know it's like i don't want to listen to that music i don't i can feel it you know i'm just it doesn't feel good i want to feel good you know right. and i try yeah. to teach them stuff but you know sometimes they rebel and listen to it just because i ask them not to but whatever <laughs> Hopefully, when they get old enough, they'll be like, you know what, mom was kind of right about a few things. <laughs> but different people like different music, right? Like, like yeah. um, it's funny how, like, you know, you can hear a song and like it just really, really resonates with you, and it doesn't with someone else, or that someone else a song really resonates with them, and it doesn't as much with you. So it's such a personal thing, right? And even like the like the younger people, you know, they usually usually younger people like different music than you know. Sure. Old but there is something about like they're they're receiving it in a certain way you know that we aren't you know and so like right if, if they if they like it and it resonates with them then it's probably a good thing for them right you know as long as it's like not really negative kill your sister type you know lyrics or right you know yeah well it, yeah and it's going to affect everybody differently I mean it just depends mm -hmm. on what you resonate at you know somebody resonating you know at a level 200 and they're listening to a certain type of music that resonates at that level then they're not going to feel bad or you know and then if somebody's playing something at, that resonates at a 400 they're not gonna like that because that's not gonna feel good to them that's gonna feel out of it's that's why you're attracted to whatever you resonate with and that's what you pull toward you and that's what feels good to you so the higher you raise your frequency then that higher that timeline you're going to go that you know the ascension and whatever you want to call it you know everybody calls it something different yeah. but i think right now is more important than ever to stay on that quality of thought high frequency because i'm telling you if the ascension's happening i'm yeah. going girl i want to yeah. go <laughs> i'm there yeah it's uh because you know you know dolores cannon you're probably familiar with right and it's like so that was a long time ago when she was saying that this was going to happen right and it's happening now what she was yes. saying you know it's really yes. interesting and uh, others as well you know um she just came to mind because the interesting thing about her is different um for those who don't know she would she would hypnotize people and uh just for a form of healing but then um they would start saying all this stuff that they were um you know coming here because there's a ascension happening and yep. they volunteered but the interesting part about it is people from all different areas of the world were saying the same thing like who didn't know each other you know and that's what really is her interest right like why are all these people that don't even know each other like you know and not even knowing what my work is like all saying the same thing you know and it kind of like rings true when you hear it as well and absolutely yeah and that's just like she talks about the backdrop people i mean so then you think about you know you incorporate this to, into your own life i mean i do anyway if i read something i try to flip it around to where where do i do that how do i do that and so when you go somewhere and you know about her backdrop people it's like you just kind of stand around and you can really see it it's like and very interesting because i'm not and it's like to some people you're invisible you know they don't even pay attention to you and vice versa those are the backdrop people we really are living in a movie it's really fascinating and i just i love it i'm like you it just it's yeah. my jazz i love it it's fantastic yeah. 
Yeah. It's like, it's a combination of a, it's a combination of a video game and a, because like, like um, in the sense of the video game where you, your higher self has the controller and then your, your human self is down there. And so like, you know, you, you, you can play this game because when you have that awareness of, of your higher self, you can, you can, um, you know, you, and, and also it lightens it up. It's kind of like, because it's, so it's coming kind of like a video game, but then a dream in one sense, because it's like so dreamlike and, um, and also like a, you know, play or a movie or so there's all these different uh, things that it's, it's um, a combination of it all somehow. Right, right. Well, I, I definitely think you need to keep it light. You know, I think a person can get way too serious. And then when you get too serious, then you can kind of go down that dark spiral and then the fear sets in. I think that's one of the, you know, that, that's what a lot of people are doing right now. Mm -hmm. And, but I know a lot of people that aren't doing that also. And, you know, we're really getting together and doing nightly meditations and that sort of thing. And, you know, our high vibe tribe sort of thing. And I think mm -hmm. it is really have an effect. Mm -hmm. um, somebody said the other day that they didn't want to send love and light to, you know, the problems and the data or whatever, because they thought if you sent love and light to the darkness, it would make the darkness stronger. Well, so I was like, well, well, it won't because darkness can't be there when the light's on. So yeah. whenever you send love and light to darkness, that actually weakens the darkness. And there's really positive change, you know, that can wake people up. So mm -hmm. nothing can love, right? And maybe the person was confusing it with the fact of um, confusing it with send, sending light and love is different than putting too much focus because like you know like if someone spends too much time putting their attention on that they're actually feeding it right and so there's that you know that there's that confusion there with that because it's like got to balance out um you know because spending all your time thinking about you know all, you know all the darkness is just feeding it and giving it anything that we yeah like it's that. easy to get on that pendulum you know on on mm -hmm. one side or the other it's it's so important just to stay in that center and then pay attention to both, you know, don't shut down both. And I think that's, that's a problem with a lot of times somebody gets so strong in their belief and this is the way that it is. And this is the only thing I'm going to believe. Well, that just closes you down yeah. to so many other possibilities yeah. that, you know, that's one of the most important things that you can do is just stay open and don't get so stuck. I have my beliefs. I mean, I believe, believe certain things are happening and going on and and you know and I don't automatically if I'm following something and, and I do believe in that if yeah. there's something said that doesn't quite feel right well I'm not going to blindly say that's right just because I believe in this you know the group or the or whatever I'm going to you know I'm yeah. a free thinker we yeah. need to be free think we've been told what to think for way too long yes it's so true. You know, I mean, yeah. you want to trust your, your gut feeling and your, and your heart and your inner thing and, you know, really be intuitive to that about, you know, what feels right and what doesn't feel right and trust that at all costs, like no matter what it, it, it may look like, um, there, there, there's such a freedom in not having to defend yourself, right? In like, Ugh. you know, and then not even sometimes needing to say something. I mean, lately I'm in so many situations where I just don't, say what I'm really thinking because um, um, certain, you know, people, even people that are close to me are not interested, like, like prefer to see, you know, what's being presented and then the narrative, you know, like uh, accepting the narrative. And it's like, um, if they're not open to looking at it another way, there's no point in saying anything because it's not going to do anything. I, absolutely. Absolutely. And I, I, I spread what I believe is my truth. I mean, I, I try to share that to wake more people up, but if somebody's just closed off to it and don't, doesn't want to hear it, well, that's their choice. I'm not certainly not going to, I'm not going to argue with them, you know, mm -hmm. you know, anything, mm -hmm. but at least I took the responsibility to show to show them, you know what I mean? Because even if you show them something and they're closed off from it, it's now, in their subconscious they still have had an inkling of it and so if it does come up later they're one step a little bit closer to it 
versus never hearing at all. Right. You know, that's yeah. like something repeated all the time is what gets into our subconscious. So right. I'm sure a lot of people go, oh, oh my gosh, but that's okay. I'm putting it out there. You yeah. know, it's your choice to do whatever you want to do with it, you know, mm -hmm. and if somebody comes back and I've had a lot of people get really hateful with me and I'm like, you know what, let's just agree to disagree and I, you know, have an awesome day and it was nice talking to you and, and yeah. I'm out. And it yeah. makes them mad sometimes because you know, yeah. they want to argue with me. I'm not going to argue with you, you know. Right. So you, yeah, that's no. your reality. No. Yeah. Yeah. They and and the thing too is like uh, it, it's the CIA that came up with the word conspiracy theory when when John yeah. F. Kennedy was shot, right? And people were right. questioning. So like anybody who questions the narrative that's being pushed is being labeled a conspiracy theorist because then that's a negative term, right? So right. Like, that's what they always brush so how dare you have a different you know opinion but um like people are not noticing that there's one narrative in the um in the mainstream media and that honest true journalism tells all sides right and so um um like that's a huge thing it's like um is not being noticed by the people that are buying the narrative that there's just one narrative being pushed, you know, and right. so, you know, you're not hearing, well, this is another viewpoint and this is another thing. And, 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 you know, you know, people are saying this as well. And, you know, all those doctors that are saying things about the virus and about the mass and about, you know, and like those, you know, those viewpoints. So if it was true, honest journalism, those viewpoints would also be put out there so people can decide for themselves. That's you know, right. all this um, censoring that's happening, you know, like, like, um, it's like free speech is going away because of all the censoring that's happening. And, and they're putting it in the name of hate speech when it's not hate speech. Like, you know, some just doesn't fit their narrative. Yeah. Yeah, like like even somebody who's uh, they even call hate speech people who talk about holistic healing, you know, because that's against big pharma, right? And so it's like, yeah, um, and and also like it's um it it feels really weird that the hugging you have to gag yourself and not hug people, yep. and no one's thinking no one's thinking that there's something wrong with that. Right, right. After CIA came up with the George uh, uh, George Bush Senior um, actually came up with the social distancing back in I think like the late seventies and uh, or whenever he was with the CIA. The dates I'm not I'm not for sure on dates, but look it up and do the research on it. And they actually have that was something that was developed in the CIA a long time ago. And it's all about, they, they want us divided. They don't want us to love each other. They don't want us to, if we unify, yeah. they absolutely have yeah. no chance. Yeah. It's no chance at all. Thing. And that's why they have things in the news about like, like, look at the racism, look at the racism. But the fact is, in my reality, there's more people who are not racist and there's more people who love. Oh, them. absolutely. But yeah. They're trying to make it seem like everybody's racist and that's what they're pushing. Right. They're not showing all the other stuff. Um, but you know what? That's really interesting. What you said about George Bush, because I always thought that that term social distancing is idiotic because we're 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 connected on social media. It's it's physical distancing, not social distancing. So that's right. Proof that, that's proof that that saying came up before there was social media. Right there. You have your proof right there, because yeah. if they would have come up with that term now, they would have called it physical distancing because it's like social distancing is the last thing we're doing. Look at us. And every right. Right. I never thought about that. There you go. Yeah, right? God, we thought, why are they calling it social distancing when everyone's even more connected on social media than ever before, right? right? It's like... <laughs> and the, the whole mask thing, I mean, it's about, it's it's a mind control device. It's about keeping us quiet. It's a, it's more symbolism than anything symbolism. I really, really yeah, believe. It, abs absolutely. It's not healthy. No. It's not healthy at all. I mean, how many doctors do you have to come out and say, this is going to make it worse. Yeah. It causes respiratory problems, all of that. And it's like, I don't know. It's, we're going to get over the hump and I worry it's going to be better than ever, I believe. Yeah. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you saw or not because you're in Canada, but I think it was yesterday that president Trump signed the executive order on, um, the fact check and the, um, the censorship of stopping, of stopping that. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's just, and, you know, it's a, it's getting over a little hurdle at a time. 
Yeah. And is it also true that he's saying um, he's making vaccination not mandatory? He's making- Absolutely. Yeah, that's already been and done. Not mandatory. mandatory. Oh, my God. Because yeah. it's like, well, I'm not taking a vaccine. You can, you can shoot me in the head. I'm not taking it, right? Yeah. And I, I saw on social media, a lot of people were saying, oh, the, he's for vaccines. He's going to make vaccines mandatory. And I mean, I, I just kind of kept an eye on it, but he never, ever once said that he was going to make vaccines mandatory because I, I watched that close because I am anti, I'm an, I'm an anti-vaxxer for mm-hmm. sure. And so, yeah, when he came out and said that, I was like, oh yes, thank you. So that, that was huge for me. Yeah. Huge. Yeah. And it, a lot of people, because yeah. especially I wouldn't, I wouldn't take a sugar pill if Bill Gates gave me a sugar pill. That's how much I don't trust that man. <laughs> so. Guess, that's yeah. another thing like like hello like what's like like what's a computer guy doing running the world health organization like isn't that a, a clue there like since when is he a doctor like you know and you know anyway whatever but but if you, if you research his lineage if you go way back in the lineage i think it, i think it's uh i get uh those guys missing stuff but it's it's a high lineage like rockefeller or something like that way down the line so he's actually in the bloodline and you know how they want to keep the bloodlines in charge and all of that so there's definitely a, a connection there and so is mark zuckerberg he is and supposedly you probably know this that facebook was actually made way before it came out and <laughs> Yeah, and then Mark Zuckerberg was kind of a front that, hey, this college kid made this social app, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. It was all like planned. And I know that sounds like, oh my gosh, conspiracy. <laughs> but if you research it, it, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah. Yeah, the, the documents and everything. So, yeah. It's very interesting. We've been played for years and years and years, but we're standing up now. Yeah. And that's the important thing. Yeah. Yeah. So it's so, so. And, you know, like they used to, um, kill people who spoke up but but um they and, and you know like you know because people were being killed all the time like more than there are now i think right you know like oh like john f kennedy you know they didn't like what he said so they shot him or you know what whatever and well uh, john f kennedy john f kennedy was trying to get rid of the federal he was trying to go back to a gold back standard yeah. well they weren't having that because yeah. their debt their, their debt there are debt slaves being us that's not going to go over with them so they got rid of him real fast yeah. Yeah. And then I think, um, did they then, they, they start doing like just making people sick, right? Like, aren't there certain people where they just like somehow, um, they, they somehow, they, they would get a disease or something and die. And then it didn't seem so obvious, like being shot. And I can't think of any names right now, but I guess oh, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. And then because it's kind of like, um, like now they have to be careful because if somebody's speaking up, because you go like, why are they keeping David Icke alive? Like, why is David Icke alive? He's been well, talking- there's a theory on that. Oh, well, there's a theory that actually was part of the deep state. And oh, he's, okay. only, you know, like, but. Because they think, like, why is he alive? Like, what they, <laughs> well, why would he be saying what he's saying if he's deep state? But he only gets you so far. Like, he doesn't go into, he, he lets you know that, hey, these problems are here. Or look at the symbol, symbolization, uh, the symbolism, all that. But he doesn't really tell you how to get over it and that sort of thing, which I kind of disagree well, with. Because if you've ever read a David I book, he talks a lot about love and how the frequency yeah. generates yeah. out of the body and all that. So I, d- I don't know. I, I don't know. That's a good question, Dee. Actually, that's the answer because I just, I just realized it because I know he does, he does talk about consciousness and that we are consciousness. And I think that that's why they can't kill him because he's more powerful because, because he, he's so aware of the fact that we are conscious beings and that we have the power and that, and, and so then they can't, they can't harm people who have high consciousness like that. You know, like, I don't know whether it's because he's being protected by some forces or because mm-hmm. it's inner law or whatever, but because he's right. totally not afraid. And that's what he says. He says, because I know, yeah. I know what I am. I know that I'm conscious. And if, even if you kill me, you can't harm me. Right. right. So, um, yeah, that's probably, and he's, he's probably got that light um, around him or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the thing too is because he goes, he goes all the way overboard and talks about reptiles and all that, that's where people will go, okay, because now he's talking about this, I'm going to write him off completely, but, but, yeah, um, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, gosh, I, I, I knew of David Ike probably, let's see, oh my gosh, how many years ago? 
17, 18 years ago. Okay. And um, I had a couple of his DVDs that I bought that I, and I got a couple of his books and I read it and I was like, well, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't go all in, right? but I didn't say that's absolutely wrong because how do I know? Right. And then I kind of like let it go and then all of, you know, come back up again. And I'm like, well, I really think this must be right. I mean, because it's all coming out. It's all coming out and well, more and more weird is that he was talking about it 30 years ago and what he said mm -hmm. happened is happening. And that's, and that's what's so interesting. And I think that's why people are starting to pay attention to him, but he had so much um, self-esteem or whatever the word is that he was so ridiculed, you know, like, and I don't, I, I, he's only been on my radar recently, like a few years. So I don't, and I've never read one of his books, but I did hear him give, like he gave, he would give seven hour talks on consciousness and stuff. And I did hear yeah. him give a really long talk about that. And I thought like, he's very spiritual, like, and he's very much, he knows what we are as, as the, you know, beyond being humans and all that. And, um, he, and he was given all that information and everything. So it's, it, yeah, it's, it's just, it's just really interesting about how that, and, and um, yeah. Well, his self-esteem and his confidence, um, and his knowing this has to be so high to go through that because I mean from what I understand he's had death threats I mean for years like you said he's been doing this for 30 years or so and just his whole life you know family threatened everything yeah. a lot of people would just stop yeah so kudos to him and mocked. you know like he would say like talk show host all they'd have to do is say my name and everybody would burst out laughing you know and so like I'm um, yeah the mockery and he kept on going. <laughs> it's incredible. Like, yeah, to have that kind of, uh, you know. Are, are you familiar with Nassim Haramine? He's a physicist. Who? Uh, his name is Nassim Haramine. But he, he's, he's, I don't a, think so. Yeah, he's a physicist. But, anyways, he, um, it just made me think of him for the minute because he, he was like that. He, and he, he would, he would go to science and physics um conferences and he had a you know he's out for such a long time his whole life he's had this view that everything's connected and 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 uh you know proving it in physics and everything and like and he would say like they would throw tomatoes at me they're always throwing tomatoes at me and i thought i love the way he's laughing about it right he's, yeah this is what i this is what I, I i believe this is what i'm working on this is what my thing is and if they're throwing tomatoes at me he's gonna bruce lipton was the same way oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Bruce Lipton said when he was coming up with all of that, the proof of the cells and the biology, all of his people that he had known forever, even his friends was like, I am so done with you. You're, you're, you're nuts. And like, it was, yeah, but they keep on going. And that's a pioneer. That's a true pioneer right there. Yeah. yeah. And like, they, wasn't he fired? Like he was fired from, uh, maybe. Yeah. Was working. Yeah. Um, and the whole thing is, is that because it's like, how dare you say that it's not about genes? How dare you say that genes can change? That's not, and the thing about it is that's the complete opposite of science because science is open-minded. Yep. And so what's happened is now there's this new religion, you know, the pseudoscience or whatever, you know, where it's like, where you're, you're not a true scientist if you're locked in, like, like you were saying about, you put, the, you put the top on, you know, the box, if you don't have right. your open mind, right? And science of all things should have an open mind, right? But yeah. now this all be, but, and then, but the, and even I remember when Deepak Chopra first came out, and he was a I mean, he was mocked too because he was talking about mind body. He was talking about mind body healing, and he was ridiculed, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and then, but then, and Andrew Weil. Do you do you know of Andrew Weil? Uh, no, no. He's a doctor. He's an MD. You know, and he okay. came out with all of this uh, about healthy eating and like not using electrical blankets because it. it uh, changes the electrical frequency around your body and it causes a lot of harm and all of this stuff long long time ago they laughed at him too i mean it's like and he's a brilliant physician brilliant yeah. physician so yeah. it, it doesn't it doesn't match up with our narrative yeah. because if we know how to control our frequency and we know how to create our reality yes then we can't be slaves that's right. That's right. And that's like, we have, we have that ultimate power because we are so free because we have the free will to choose how we're going to perceive things and how we're going to look at things. And, and we, and we are in charge of our own vibration. Like we have the ability to raise our vibration and manage our vibration, you know, and even if we, you know, if, if, uh, you know, we have those yucky days that, that we have, 
we have tools to get us back on track. You know, because when I was younger, it would take me weeks to get out of a depression or something. You sure. Know? And now, and some people never do. Right. That's what sad. Yeah. Yeah. Now you had, um, you have studied and utilized in your, uh, JAMA is, uh, is as well does um, coaching and programs like to uh, guide people to maintain peace and, and balance and uh, flow. And I love these things that you have studied like natural health and integrative nutrition, soul coaching, um, the yes. Sona method, the Silva method, emotional freedom technique, um, Reiki, Oho, Pono, Pono, um, yeah. a universal life minister as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. things are so cool. So you like incorporate all that in your programs and coaching. I do, you know, because everybody's different. You know, everybody's different. And uh, I don't know, I just kind of listen and, and tune in to what they're saying and intuitively kind of know where to guide them, that sort of thing. And if something, you know, goes off on another way, then it goes off on another way. You know, you just kind of have to go with the flow and, and go from there. So right. my what passion, I love it. That's really cool. Like, what started it? What was the first one that you did? Do you remember? Well, where it started was probably about, let's see, probably about 21 years ago. I was, uh, I owned, a, I was an interior designer. I had a, my own business in Southern Illinois, and um, I had everything that somebody could want. I mean, I had a successful business. I had two gorgeous kids. I, you know, I had a happy marriage and. Uh, something was just missing and I turned over one night and I said I I really need something spiritual in my life and then before I knew it I was on this path be careful what you wish for <laughs> my world exploded after that oh my gosh I sold my business I got a divorce I started traveling I started getting all of these certifications and uh, my my ultimate goal is I want to open my own retreat healing thought center mm -hmm. and uh, that's 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 what I'm focusing on right now. So, but I do love it. And I, I don't think there is any situation that a person cannot get over. And I just, I want every to, I just, my heart, I want everyone to be happy. You know, <laughs> I just want everybody to feel good. Yeah. Well, what a beautiful so, mission that is. Do you have a, an idea where you would want to have it? Like where in your town where you, you live in Illinois right now still or? No, I moved over to Kansas City. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I got remarried and moved to Kansas City, and, and I live here now. But um, I thought about putting one here, you know, right in smack dab in the middle of the United States. Um, but I don't know. I'm open. I'm really, I've been doing a lot of research on uh, Lemurian times and Atlantis and things like that. And if I had to choose right now and somebody said, you know what, I'm going to build you a retreat center whenever, wherever you want, I think I'd go to Mount Shasta area. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, I really would. Because they're, because like, I, I'm, I'm they're really drawn there. there. Are I'm are really the drawn. Are still there? Aren't they under Mount Shasta still? Well, supposedly. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, yeah, I'm uh, just, yeah. I'm just, I've been having a lot of really vivid dreams. I've really had some interesting things happen and I'm getting, I've met a couple of very nice, sweet, awesome people that live at, uh, close to Mount Shasta now that I, um, that I think is just wonderful. And I don't know, we'll see where I'm open. I'm open. Well, are you familiar with the Stargate? Because Alcazar lives there, right? Um, what's his name? Um, Oh my goodness, I forgot his name, but the guy who channels Alcazar, and they have the whole Stargate thing, and they, they live in Mount Shasta. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but I'm not. Yeah, because they do, um, um, they do these Stargate meditations, and there's, there's, they, there's so many people all over the world, like they travel a lot to different cities, but uh, I was in a meditation group in my town where we would go to this guy's house and listen to them, and um, it's like, the Stargate is like a Merkaba, right? Because it's a vehicle. And so you could, you know, you, 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 um, you imagine it around you, although some people physically do build them. And, um, and then we, we travel up and we all like, like we get into, like, first of all, when we get into the, we build the Stargate around us in our imagination and we ground into earth, right? And we, and we, right. receive, we receive the energy of earth so that we are taking earth the energy for with us right and then we connect with everybody who's you know ever 
created a stargate for themselves and who's ever so like you know this this whole connection where you're you know no matter when they are doing it whatever time or whatever like you really feel into this group collective thing right and then we go up we go up to these different dimensions and then we go up and then we go up to the 12th dimension and there's like angels and all these beings and they they um they just send us all this loving energy and we we really feel into the um the field you know the energy field um you know and and it's interesting that so many different modalities have that energy field and they have different names for it, you know, because, you know, the deem in the reality transurfing calls it the space of variations. And then right. uh, Nassim Haramine and Unified Physics, they call it the unified field, you know, yeah. but it's this field and Eastern mystics, you know, they, they call it the field to which, from which everything arises into which everything returns you know and really feeling into that into that feel like that's an, like receiving the um the energy from it but it was interesting because i went to a um i went to a seminar in california like last june and uh and and, and alcazar the guy who who channels alcazar was there but it wasn't his it wasn't his um seminar but he had attended it too because he, he was interested you know and right. it's so cool to uh um you know to connect in that way because it was like this instant connection even though you know i'd never really i'd never seen him before but and he just walked up to me and stood in front of me and looked at me right and it was like you're alcazar and he goes no i'm just his name right because prajit his name is prajit right so then he's uh, but um but anyway so like and so they have this uh they live there in mount shasta but they they travel a lot he started channeling this alcazar but then this young woman all of a sudden she started channeling alcazar too so now they, they do it together like they hadn't they didn't know each other before but they and they both channel this 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 being and uh she they sound the same kind of or whatever they say you know the same kind of thing but i mean there's so many channelers you know and i only recently started getting into all that right but the, um, um, the thing is, is like the messages are so wonderful, you know, like, 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 um, like, you know, even Abraham Hicks, like the message is very simple, you know, and, and like, she's, right. I keep just saying the same thing over and over again. Like, you know, all I'm saying is you're, you're focusing on what you don't want, you know, you're saying what you want, you know, and, but you're focusing on the other end of it. Right. And it's like, like a million ways of saying that, you know, it's like, you know, but I, you know, I do want this or I do want that or, you know, whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you're saying you don't or, you know, and it's like, it's such a simple concept, but it's so hard for people to grab. Sometimes, sometimes it is hard. Yeah. 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 Like we've been, been programmed. programmed. Yes. We're, yes. Little, we're little programmed beings and we got to get in there and deprogram ourselves. Yes. Yes. Take out the motherboard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's so much programming, you know, and, and even with, um, you know what we learn in school because like the because isn't there a thing about wasn't rockefeller behind what's taught in the Amer was it rockefeller or who someone who's behind what's taught at the schools in the u.s had created the curriculum and is um like you have oh i'm I, yeah i'm sure of it i mean i was a substitute teacher when i was moving over here uh, for something in between i was a substitute teacher for three years and i couldn't believe what these they were feeding these kids i thought man no yeah. wonder we've got the, you know, so many millennials that are socialists right now. It's, it's unbelievable because that's, they, they, they're teaching victimization and um, division and it's really sad. I mean, I have an 11 year old and I try to deprogram him every time he gets home from school. I'm like, what'd you learn today? Well, but now he's, he's old enough now. He sees right through it. Oh, good. Good. Yeah. He'll laugh at it. He'll laugh at it. Oh, good. Because it's like the, uh, you know, once we're, once we're done with all this that we're going through right now, this ascension or whatever we want to call it, the schools are going to be so revised, you know, because there is going to be meditation, you know, um, um, the children are going to know who and what they are. Because, it, you know, isn't it interesting that like, like, it's never addressed that you're a powerful being, you know, and you have free will and you have, you can have an open mind and you can see, you know, perceive things in your own way and, and all this other stuff like that. None of that, you know, it is as much a part of, you know, like, like, like everybody had to get there, especially like people my age and that we had to like get out of school and go on our own and read all this stuff, you know, to, right. to, to learn all this. And it's like, it should be part of what everybody is learning. Well, and I guess too, not just um, not just in school, but I guess at home as well. You know, because because I I kind of had a thing with my uh, I think a lot of people my age did that where we didn't want to shove anything down their throats, right? Because because it's like 
the parents' generation were our parents' generation were had you know like religion shoved down their throat like fundamentalist religion and then you know like the uh, you know things like religious wars and burning people at the stake and all that you know gave religion a bad name right so then the baby was thrown out with the bathwater and then in kind of my generation we didn't want to force any kind of spirituality or anything so I I never you know really taught my kids anything about what I was learning all I could do was was by example kind of thing you know right but um so um like where is the spirituality at with um like 11 year olds these days kind of well these days I don't really know all I all I know is all I know is about mine and and he's over him but you know I do get the eye roll every once in a while yeah great (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. You know, if you, if you think about it too, D, I mean, when you go back to even the forties or whatever, I mean, we weren't really, I mean, my parents weren't taught anything. That's really all there was, was organized religion, unless you were really on the fringe and you knew about Neville Goddard or, you know, Mary Baker Eddy or somebody like that, which was really rare. So really that's all, if they wanted something spiritual, they thought that that fundamental religion was the way to go. Then it was used as an agenda for division. Well, if you're a Christian, you can't like Muslim. If you're a Muslim, you can't, you know, like Hindus, you know, it's all that. So it's been used as a force of division instead of embracing the beauty of it, you know? So, and you know, instead of using the symbolism for yes. love. Yes. And it's like the new thought movement is actually kind of making a comeback. Well, thanks to Brian Scott. <laughs> Shout out to Brian Scott. But it's like, um, um, because like I got involved in, uh, you know, in my twenties in the unity church, cause the unity church, you know, the, uh-huh. the Fillmore's and all that, and they were totally new thought, you know, and all that. And, and, right. um, and so got really, really exposed to that. And it's like, okay, now here's something I can really relate to, you know, that, that, um, cause it was like a more of a, a more rational type approach, you know, where, where, you know, God is within and all that stuff, you know, and then along came Wayne Dyer and Deepak Chopra. <laughs> I just say, yeah. you know, it's just exploded. Once people started, I think like I was when I said, you know, I rolled over in bed and said, I need something spiritual. I think everybody has that underlying knowing of there's something more, you know, even, you know, I, I've, I've talked to several people that are like on the fence about spirituality or atheist. And, and I really try to listen to what they say. Cause I kind of want, I want to understand where they're coming from. And they always go back, well, it's science. Well, it's science. Well, science and spirituality is totally interlocking now. So they're kind of losing that. But it's hard for me to imagine anybody wouldn't think there was some sort of higher power when you have a thinking mind and then you have your subconscious mind coming in with something else. Where do you think that comes from? You know? Where, where do you, where do you think that comes from when you're getting ready to walk through a door and you have a really bad feeling? And then when you walk in and you can feel the tension in the air, what right. do you think that is? If that's not higher power frequency. Right. Yeah. I mean, to me, you would have to be totally numb not to know that there's something there to be investigated. Yeah. I don't know. Well, and it's interesting <clears throat> about science because, uh, um, I gotta, I gotta read you this because I don't know if I can find it, but never mind. But I'll, I'll just say it, I guess, because, um, you know, Bentino Macero said the other day that, and then he goes, I don't even know why I said that because he was actually just doing a, he did this a series of eight meditations for this lockdown time or whatever. But then all of a sudden he said this, uh, <laughs> um, that, um, science, you know, they can't prove, they can't prove the, the material world. Like they can't prove, like they actually, they're all about, you know, proving everything, but they can't prove that, that um, our world is not within consciousness, you know, because it's like, um, um, like there's that whole thing that, that the world is within consciousness, right? And, you know, and then scientists are saying, well, the brain produces consciousness, but it's like, but they say that, but they can't prove it. They like, it's, right not proven that the brain produces consciousness and that's a theory and they also and and so it's like so so consciousness is within us right and it's kind of interesting thing that 
that um, it's not even sci science isn't even scientific in so many ways, you know, so much of it's is theory, right? Yeah. And then when they try to prove it, they, they, they come back and say, well, I guess it's based on perspective because it depends on who the per person is looking at it on what the result is. Well, that's quantum physics. Yeah, exactly. Quantum exactly. physics comes close, comes close to that because of that, right? Because of the observer right. effect, right? Yeah. You that's know, right. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And, and that aligns with that whole thing that what you focus on increases, you know, because it's like the, it's like the perspective, you know, there's That's so right. many of these cases where people remember things differently, you know, or whatever, like that whole Mandela effect and everything, you know? Right. And like I said, right now is so important to focus on what you want and how you want things to be, because you can even feel it physically time speeding up. I mean, time is just, oh, it's June 1st. 2020. <laughs> Holy cow. So the time is speeding up and things are happening at a fast pace, which means you better get your ducks in a row. You better be thinking about what you want, where you want life to go. How do you, how do you want the world to be that you live in? And yeah. I think a lot of people right now don't really know. They don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I want, I want to live in a nice house or I want this or I want that, but how do you want it? How do you want your life to be? Mm -hmm. You know, I try to think you unification, people getting along, people loving each other, people helping each other. You yeah. know, I give to you, you give to me, we help each other, you know, just all about that. That's more so what you need to be focusing on that energy level of unity mm -hmm. and love and higher consciousness. And that's where we're going to go. That is where we're going to go. Yeah. So right yeah. now we, that's what we have to be focusing on. Yeah. And the thing too, is like the, the actual details are not as important because like, as you said, it's the energy of it, right? So it's like how you want to feel like, so we want to feel that we're living in a beautiful world. We want to feel that we're living in a, in, in a world where, you know, everybody's fed, you know, like that's not so difficult, you know, everybody's fed and everybody's loved, you know, everybody's cared for right. and, and, and people are doing like creative things and everybody's making the contribution. And so like, like it's how, you know, it's that whole thing about the feeling is the secret really. And the feeling is the energy, yep. you know, the, so it's like, feel how you want to feel. And so that's how we have the free will because we have the free will to feel how we want to feel, you know, and, and align with that vibration and then just watch everything, you know, align with that. Which is exactly why gratitude is so important. Yeah. It really is. Really high vibe. <laughs> you know, the Institute of Heart Math says it's the highest vibration, right? Coming out of the, the, the heart, right? Is that? Absolutely. Yes. And also I think um, awe and wonder you know, and reverence and all that, that's very high vibration as well, right? You know, and I mean, and, and I guess kind of awe and wonder do kind of go in hand in hand with gratitude in a way, you know, and, and um, there's different levels of gratitude because, you know, being, you know, being grateful for your house or for the great day or whatever is different than living as gratitude, as a state of being, like living in the gratitude. So the gratitude doesn't go away. It doesn't come when, you know, it's that same thing with happiness, right? That happiness, yep. the state of being rather than as, you know, dependent on a circumstance. Because if it's dependent on a circumstance, it can be taken away if that circumstance is yeah. taken away, right? And, and we know that happiness is what we are because all you have to do is look at healthy children and that's how they naturally are. You know, they're naturally healthy and they're naturally playful and they're, they're light. Yeah. They don't hold grudges either. <laughs> and they don't need to wear a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I won't get off on that tangent. <laughs> I just want people to be healthy. And then I see these little kids wearing masks. I'm like, oh my gosh, that's cutting off the high oxygen levels. And the, you know, it's, I don't know, we'll get over it. Well, well it's, it's not only that, it's that thing where they're saying like, um, uh, the masks are to keep bacteria out, but a virus is way smaller. So like a virus can just go through, you know, is that one doctor that's yeah. like a mosquito through going through a mesh fence. It's like, because a virus, you know, so it's like the people that, you know, they, from the goodness of their heart, those ones who are wearing a mask because they think that they're protecting other people, you know, they go like, you know, it's there, that it's not a selfish act. It's because I'm, I'm doing it to honor and protect others. And they don't understand that a virus could go through that mask. Right. Right. And, and is that true? I mean, I mean, um, 
you know, I, I mean, I've heard, you know, doctors, you know, more than one saying that. So it's kind of like, right. Well, well could it be that that's not true? Well, we need to develop immunity too. I mean, we have to develop our immunity. I mean, the best thing a kid can do is roll around in the dirt and get those microorganisms and that immunity built up. I mean, we're not doing ourselves any good by using all of this hand sanitizer. And you're killing your immune system. Stop yeah. it. Stop yeah. it. Right. That's a very good point about that. The, is very, pe the very people that want to keep us debt slaves and kill us, you're listening to them about the mask and the hand sanitizer. It's all built in together. Be free. Yeah. Know that you're healthy. Know that your immune system is strong and know that you're, know that, mm. that you're okay. Your life takes care of you. Yes. Yes. You know, worst case scenario, you get sick with this. You've got like, what is it? A 0.003% chance of, I mean, a death if you have a complicated immune system or health problems anyway. Yeah. But I don't know. Well, there's all those other stories too that, you know, they're manipulating the death certificates, you know, someone dies of a liver cancer and it says they died of, you know, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, there's been doctors you? come out. There's been morticians come out. There's several morticians that comes out and said, I was mad because I have to put on the death certificate, the truth. And I know that this person didn't, and the families were upset too. They were mm -hmm. like, my dad didn't die from COVID. He yeah. had a heart attack. And it's yeah. like, well, you know, it's on the death certificate. Yeah. And then some places the family wasn't getting, uh, wasn't able to see the body because of the COVID. And they, it was, it's just, yeah. they've got everybody confused and upset and then in fear. And then that way, if you're living in fear, you're easier to control because you're just going to go, okay, I'll do that. Oh, okay. Is that what I need to do? Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Well, the yeah. big, Big fear thing right now going around is when school goes back, they're going to have kids separated and the kids are going to have to wear a mask. And I'm putting it out there that that's not going to happen. I think, I think we'll be better by that. I don't think that'll happen, but if it does, my son won't be going to school. I'll put that out there right now. Yeah. Yep. He will be homeschooled. Yeah, for sure. Which I'd like to do anyway, but you know, I'm so busy and working and then coaching and all of that stuff, but I'll make it work. Because I'm, I'm not putting him through that. He doesn't deserve it. Yeah. Well, really gonna, you know, um, focus, you know, my my attention on how I want it to be. You know, where yes, I was talking about before, you know, where that's not. We don't have, you know, children walking around. I mean, to me, that is such a big clue that we're being told to gag ourselves and not hug each other and not come near each other. Right. Like if that's not a big clue, what is? You know, and th there's that whole other thing about, you know. You know, people die, people have been dying from flu viruses, you know, every year people die from, you know, and all this other stuff. So it's kind of like, there seems to be so much um, obviousness about that there's something else going on, you know? And like, I don't call it the pandemic, I call it the lockdown, right? Because it's like, how are you affected? Well, how I'm affected is I'm, I'm only affected by the, lap, by the lockdown, right? And, um, and, and I totally agree with you about the immune system. And to keep the immune system, um, 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 healthy includes how we are processing things, you know, so it's, 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 it's breathing freely. And then, then it's also, um, you know, you know, seeing that, you know, building our immune systems as well as by, um, you know, how we're seeing this world, you know, like this is a, this is a, this is a wonderful, wonderful world. Right. And we, we, uh, we can align with that and live like that and remember yep. that of light and love and, Absolutely. Absolutely. Well said. Really exciting. And you're right. It really is an exciting time. It is. It is. And we all signed up for it. We're all signed up to be here. Yeah. So anybody that's complaining about being here, including myself at times, I signed up for it. Now I've got to, uh, I've got to do the warrior code that I signed up yeah. for because we're all warriors. We are all warriors that's going through this right now. Yeah. 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 I think that's a really great note to end on, isn't it? <laughs> it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so much fun chatting with you. We'll definitely have to do Oh, I love talking to you, Dee. You're fantastic. Yeah, so are you. So are you. So we'll say uh, thanks for joining us, and uh, we'll see you next time, guys. All right.